Most folding bayonets are not too impressive. Just a spike, or in some cases a blade, permanently mounted to the end of a rifle. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Soviet M44, Chinese or Yugoslavian SKSs, or the Japanese Type 44. All of these feature a bayonet that can be folded away when not in use, but isn't much good for anything else. However, in this video, we are going to take a look at one of the most unique folding bayonets, and in my opinion, one of the most interesting bayonet designs of all time, the Italian M38. This bayonet was initially developed in the mid-1930s and originally intended to be used with the Beretta Model 38A submachine gun. Shortly thereafter, it was also decided that this same type of bayonet would be used on the new Carcano M38 short rifle. The submachine gun bayonet was modified for use on the Carcano by slightly shortening the blade and adding a muzzle ring. In theory, this bayonet took the desirable features of both permanently mounted bayonets and detachable bayonets, combining them into one convenient package. Like a permanently mounted bayonet, the M38 could be stowed on the end of the rifle in its folded position so that it wouldn't be in the way when it wasn't needed. However, at a moment's notice, the blade could be rotated 180 degrees and was ready to go. Keeping it on the end of the rifle also removed a bit of weight from the soldier's belt. Now, the M38 went through a number of design changes during its lifetime, and collectors have identified a few different variations, between three to five, depending on who you ask. The first version used a latch lock to affix it to the rifle. This method of attachment proved undesirable and prone to breakage, so it was quickly abandoned in favor of a more traditional push-button style locking catch. This second version is what I have here. So first, let's take a look at the folding mechanism. So to fold in this bayonet, you have this large button right at the front here. This depresses just like that, and then you're going to take your blade, pull it out, and then it can be rotated. And it rotates right into the handle. Now once it's in the handle, you can then push it in again, and it locks back into place. It's not going to move, it can't swing out on its own, and you know, this obviously wasn't intended to be a pocket knife or anything like that, so it doesn't fold completely inside the handle or anything like that, because if it was off the rifle, you wouldn't have it like this. It would be in its scabbard, which we'll get to in a minute. But then to unfold it, same process, your button, give you a close look at that button right there. I'm gonna press that in, pull it out, rotate, and back in. You can see just how short the tang of this blade is there. It only takes up about, what's that, a quarter of the handle or so. Then if we rotate it out, you can see the slot that the button rides in that allows you to push it in, pull it out. Some other latching mechanism bits here and there. We put it back out. You can see the bottom of it is actually knurled. Now, apart from the folding mechanism, the rest of the bayonet is fairly standard. The blade is a good bit shorter than most of its contemporaries, right at seven inches from the fuller to the tip. But the M38 was intended to be used on a short, lightweight rifle, so this makes sense. Something else you may be wondering about is the color of the blade. Nearly every folding M38, with the original finish on its blade, has experienced this color change to some degree. The color varies from bright reds to dark plum and everything in between. I'm not sure exactly what causes this change, but it certainly has something to do with the treatment process or chemicals used when bluing the blade. Presumably, when the bayonet originally left the factory, it would have exhibited a more normal color close to that of the other blue parts. If you're a patient, you can find a M38 with a very vibrant, even finish but most tend to be blotchier. Sometimes you'll come across examples with no finish on the blade, and that isn't original. The finish was probably removed by a previous owner who thought it was ugly. Now let's take a quick look at some of the other features of the hilt. We have the locking lug on the end here, and then out to take it on and off of your rifle. Two wooden grip scales. The interesting thing about these is there are four screws holding them on, you know, normally most bayonets have just two long screws that go all the way through, but since this has to fold into the handle, that won't work. So four little screws holding on each separate grip scale, muzzle ring, and some markings. 
Now as for the markings, the only place you will find them is on the back of the hilt below the muzzle ring. Mine are a little hard to read, so I'm going to insert some close-up photos. Here we have the letters IVU inside of an oval, which is some sort of inspection stamp. Next to it we have the bayonet's serial number. The final marking is the manufacturer mark of Raka, which produced this particular bayonet. A number of these bayonets were also sent to Finland with their accompanying rifles as war aid. These will have the famous SA property mark stamped somewhere in this location as well. Lastly, we have the scabbard. It is a simple design made of blued sheet metal with a separate piece for the throat at the top here. We have a loop for the belt. Some versions will also have a stud for attaching to a frog, whereas this version would have been worn directly on the belt with no frog needed. The geometry of the bayonet itself corresponds nicely with the scabbard throat. Nice fit, in my opinion, a very attractive bayonet. The folding M38 proved to be unpopular with soldiers who found that the folding mechanism did not hold up to hard use. One of its biggest weak spots was the extremely short tang that was required to accommodate this mechanism. It was also time consuming and expensive produce compared to a standard bayonet, requiring extra machining and parts. Because of these drawbacks, a third version known to collectors as the fixed folder was introduced. These were made from leftover folding M38 parts, but had the blade locked in the extended position. They are most easily identified by looking for remnants of the locking mechanism machined into the blade. Eventually, leftover parts were exhausted, and the fourth version was made solely from new parts, leaving no trace of its unique past. Today, the folding M38 is highly prized by collectors, often costing as much or more than the rifle it was designed for. I searched for over a year before I found mine, one that is in original condition without any issues. You will sometimes come across M38s that appear to have new bluing or some sort of finish applied to the blade. These are often paired with scabbards that have had black paint applied over the original bluing. It is my assumption that these were refurbished by someone or some country after the war, but I haven't been able to find any information that confirms that. Perhaps it was done by the Italians themselves, I don't know. Just be on the lookout for those. I personally wouldn't pay as much for one, but they normally seem to sell at auction for prices equal to M38s in original condition. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. The M38 is in my top three favorite bayonets of all time because of how unique it is. I've wanted to make a video on it for a while, but was waiting until I could pick up a good example. Thanks for watching.